This build hits wicked hard. It gives you 141% weapon damage bonus on top of 200% crit damage with 1.1 million armor. I'm going to show you how you can use it against solo heroic control points and group play against hunters, rogues, and even the legendary white tusk NPCs. I'm even going to show you how to pull 4.2 million damage on crit from this build. Episode 8 of my signature Netflix style miniseries is up next. Be sure to stick around after for the build details. Enjoy. My name used to be Julia Coleman. I'm 23 years old and I don't know if I'm going to live through the night. This entire fucking town wants to kill me. And they may say it's because they thought I hacked everybody's shit. I was behind it or that I'm a traitor. I'm a bitch. I deserve it. I have it coming. But guess what? The horsemen and I are just pawns serving the same game. As for being a traitor, a bitch? Sure. That doesn't hold a fucking candle to your hypocrisy. That's the fucking sickness here. From the moment I infiltrated your ranks, all I was ever given were bullshit orders. Scavenge, steal, capture them, torture, kill, scream louder, be quiet, be fearless, be a leader. Don't be so difficult, be strong, don't talk back, be loyal, be a bitch. Be whatever you want to be, even lead this clan. Just kidding. Fuck you. The simple fact that you still pretend this is your world. You built this. Lies. I'm here to tear it the fuck down. But don't look at me. Don't take your hate out on me. I just got here. A big movement needs big enemies. Someone who threatens their freedoms, their lives. The Hand gave them you. Those behind us are not the only true patriots. We fancy ourselves true patriots and we accept the possibility of our death. Both of us. Our lives offered willingly for the highest cause. The heart of this land. All we have to do is die. Still want to kill me? Beat me, stab me, shoot me, let's go. Rally your fucking crew, grab your guns, and hide behind your masks. You want to do this? Give it your best shot. Because people like you have prepared me my whole life for this. What's in your head? You may kill me, but I'm just a pawn. And you're already dead. Agents, I hope you enjoyed episode eight of the Division Two Netflix style miniseries. As you can see, the Four Horsemen conspiracy grows more complex the further we get into the miniseries. I can't wait to take you deeper down the rabbit hole 
as the rest of the season plays out. And season two is just around the corner. So if you still need to catch up on past episodes, I'll drop a link to the miniseries playlist here and links in the description area below. Rogue agent neutralized. So this build is centered on the named rifle, the artist tool. You can get this rifle by farming targeted loot or with named item caches. It comes with the talent Perfect Rifleman, which stacks an additional 11% weapon damage per headshot for five seconds, up to 66% total weapon damage. Each headshot refreshes the damage. This is a rifle, so the Fox Spray knee pads are best in slot for this build. The rifle gave us 10% damage to target out of cover. These knee pads give us an additional 8%. My gloves are all red grupo with crit damage and weapon handling. Since we're at range, I'm using the coyotes mask to help us with our crit chance. That way I can put as much crit damage on the build as possible. Most of the time we'll be fighting beyond 15 and 25 meters. I'm running the name Providence backpack, the gift. And that's because you want to run vigilance with this build for that additional 25% weapon damage. The rifle has 40 rounds in the mag, which allows us to span headshots. This also means that our head is out of cover a lot, which means we'll be taking damage, which disables the Vigilance buff. The gift helps you get that buff back faster. Warning, your division affiliation has been disavowed. You are now on this road. To anybody out there listening, this is a call to action. Share this video. Or if you're a writer, graphic designer, project manager, video editor, knowledgeable in game lore, or... So just a girl standing in front of a boy. Asking him to love her. Join us on my Discord as we gear up for the second season of the Division 2 Netflix style build miniseries. A story about a time of crisis, a pandemic, where the lines between being a hero and villain are blurred. In this world, fate, as we know it, is decided by the Division 2 community. Remember, whoever you are, wherever you are, you can be part of this story. You can be part of something bigger. So throw on some slippers, put on a poncho, and grab a code red Mountain Dew. Then go to my Discord, the Casting Call channel, drop us a line, then follow the White Rabbit. I'm running Cheska for 10% crit chance on the chest, but what's really important is the talent, Focus, which has given us an additional 50% weapon damage. So you only have to run an 8x scope for this to kick in, and I chose the 12x scope for that additional 5% headshot damage that it gives us, as well as I prefer the crosshairs on that site. Now I'm using an improvised holster so I can get the max amount of crit damage on this build which is about 200%. Now on paper, it only shows we have 32% crit chance, but we're actually at 57% most of the time thanks to the Coyote's Mask. We also have 155% headshot damage, which is pretty healthy for a rifle build. For the specialization, you wanna run Sharpshooter because it's gonna give you 15% increased weapon stability, reduced recoil, and faster reacquisition of targets. It's also giving your rifle 15% additional headshot damage. As an option, you can trade in some crit hit damage for some armor on kill. You can do that by replacing the gloves in the holster with two pieces of bellstone and making sure they have crit damage rolled on them. If you also have the death grip gloves with 10% armor on kill, that's another way to go. You're playing at range, so distance is your survivability. But a little bit of armor on kill is a nice thing to have. And this build hits so hard that losing a little bit of crit damage isn't going to bother you that much. Now with this build setup, you're going to average about 2.6 million on crit. If you swap the artist tool for the M1A, you can get 4.2 million on crit. The M1A CQB gives you 3.4 million on crit. If you're power hungry, go for the named M1A, the Baker's Dozen. The handling, stability, and weapon reload aren't the greatest on this rifle, and we're going for headshots, so perfect lucky shot on this rifle really helps alleviate the pain. The artist tool is a wonderful rifle for spanning headshots. It has 40 rounds in the mag, which means you're not spending all your time reloading, which is important because perfect rifle bin stacks only last for five seconds and are refreshed on headshots. And overall, the weapon handling is way better than the M1A, which means you can be landing more of those shots. Also, high RPMs are really great for riflemen because the stacks only last for five seconds, right? And with riflemen fully proc, you're at about 350,000 total weapon damage. When going for headshots, I don't think the M1As are a good option unless you're running Lucky Shot. And that's just simply because the weapon handling isn't that great and the reload time is really painful. I'm running the 8x scope on the named MPX The Apartment. 
This is a pro tip. Not very many people know that you can run an 8x scope on an SMG, nor do many people actually think about doing it. However, an SMG paired up with an 8x scope and focus really shreds. Not just because of the 50% weapon damage you're getting from the chest piece talent, but also because of the 30% headshot damage you're getting from the scope itself. And most of the time you're fighting enemies beyond 10 meters with an SMG. The 8x scope really works well at this distance. And the apartment comes with perfectly measured, which gives you an additional 20% rate of fire on the front half of the magazine. And with focus as a talent, I find that most of the enemies are dead before I even get to the second half of the magazine. I actually covered this in a different build video. You should check it out when you get a chance. I'll drop a link below. Now this build does really well against hunters because with hunters, you wanna play with as much distance between you and them as possible. And that's because the most lethal damage comes from their melee attack. And also because this weapon and the build do really well at headshots. Not just because you're going for headshots, but it actually does really well at making those headshots. Headshots can help stagger an enemy and keep them from healing themselves, but it also gives you the most damage possible applied to that enemy. And because of the damage bonuses, the weapon's RPM as well as the large magazine, taking down named enemies, legendary elites, hunters, and even rogues, is so efficient with this build, it's a beautiful thing, and that's why I call it the Rembrandt. And actually, in the Division 2, the artist tool was the rifle that got me into rifles. It wasn't the Baker's Dozen, it was actually the artist tool. But now, as I put together this rifle build and trying the Baker's Dozen and artist tool, I can say for those critical fights against hunters and rogues, the artist tool is a better option. And that's because with like hunters, you only have a few seconds to take them down. And with the M1A, if you get caught in a reload moment, while the enemy is standing there vulnerable, you might miss them because the reload is painfully slow. And because the weapon handling on the weapon itself isn't as great as the artist tool. But the Baker's Dozen and its 4.2 million crit damage is undeniably a beast. So if you're not worried about the details, and you just want that raw damage, hard hitting punch, then go with the Baker's Dozen. But if you want to be an efficient killer in this game, when it matters most, I suggest you try the artist tool. In general, when it comes to fighting rogues, hunters, or legendary NPCs, distance is your friend. And that's why this is a really, really good build to use, because at distance, you're a very large threat. I mean, getting 2.4 million crits on a 40 round mag from 25 plus meters out is a dangerous thing. I mean, the only thing more deadly from that distance is a sniper build. But when it comes to hunters and rogues, sniper builds are actually not that great. And that's because there's a small window of opportunity of when the enemy is most vulnerable. And with that bolt action, slow RPM, when you miss that shot, it's going to hurt. And most of the time, like with hunters and maybe chungas, it's going to take more than one shot to the head to bring them down. And the artist tool and its 2.4 million crits, you can do what a sniper does with two rounds in two seconds. And even if you only have a 40% accuracy, you're still going to get somewhere around 10 million in total damage. That's better than zero if you miss your shots with a marksman rifle. Now this isn't a brand new concept. It's well known among veterans of the Division 2 that a Baker's Dozen build is really good for hunters and rogues and chungas alike. Again, but what I'm suggesting is that the artist tool or this Rembrandt build is even more efficient at taking down these enemies in that small window of opportunity when they're most vulnerable. Now for general gameplay, there are weaknesses. Now I wouldn't say that the build particularly brings them to the table. The weaknesses are in rifle builds in general. Just because of the nature of the beast, you're spending a lot of time with your head out of cover. That's because rifles aren't that great at blind firing. Focus adds to that because it runs a magnifying scope. So with this build, you're gonna be a more efficient killer the farther out you are. And when possible, keep an ally between you and the enemies at all times. That way they're taking aggro and you can keep your head out of a cover, keep in focus parked longer, as well as vigilance because you're not taking heat. The decoy helps here a lot as well. Another pro tip for focus, hold the aim button down when reloading. This will help you not lose your focus stacks. And if you have an 8x scope or higher on your other weapon, you could also switch to your other weapon and not lose your stacks that way either. 
And the last tip is there's a small amount of time where you can let go of the aim or left trigger. This is around half a second, but you can use that to your advantage and pop in and out of cover. Or you can scope out to acquire targets faster who are spread out. Check out these off meta builds that provide you with amazing survivability while you charge through enemy hordes. Tuxedo out.